today I'm going to show you how to cheat a little bit at doing pictures. Now, um, I'm starting off by doing this. It's it's a landscape picture, um, and it's a photograph that I took a couple of years ago at Suta Lighthouse, um, which is not far from here. Um, and I climbed up to the very top there. Uh, just FYI, I did climb to the top of that tower, um, but it was a particularly um, mad day where there was like a storm brewing up in the north here and um, it just made this great photograph and it's just so bright white the, the the walls and everything but anyway so this is a photograph that I'd taken um, and what I wanted to do was I was wanting to turn it into a watercolour picture um, I'm not particularly fantastic at drawing um, I mean I can I just I'm quite lazy and I would rather get it right first time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick it's quite a big trick actually uh, how to do a picture um, accurately from um, a photograph uh, it works quite it works well for photographs of people as well I did a rather nice photograph uh, to watercolor of my boyfriend so much so he didn't actually realize when I sent him a photograph of it that it was a picture that I'd painted. He thought that it was just an app that I'd done on the computer and uh, on the phone. Uh, so yeah, I had to actually show him it in person so that he would believe that I'd actually made it. So um, yeah, it does work for both um, faces and landscapes and all sorts of things. But um, it involves a bit of legwork, first of all, or pencil work, I should say. So first of all, the things that you need, we've got a pencil. Um, I could only find HB pencils because in my house there are two artists living here <laughs> um, and I think my daughter has hijacked all of the pencils so I could only find HB pencils. Um, I've got a rubber just because rubbers are useful to have. Uh, another thing that's important to have which I have got around here somewhere is a pencil sharpener. Um, I have got one. I know I've got one because I found well I found a couple. Um, but a pencil sharpener, there we go, pencil sharpener is very important. Um, not least because you will be using quite a lot of pencil. I'm not going to lie, it will use quite a lot of pencil. So, you've got your, your photograph. doesn't have to be one that's printed off from the computer. This one is, but it doesn't have to be. You can take an image out of a magazine. Um, just make sure it's not a photograph that you want to keep because you will do a certain amount of destruction to the image so what I would say is make sure it's not one that you want to keep um, it doesn't have to be colour either you can do it black and white and then transfer it into colour in your mind if you know what I mean and then I've got a piece of watercolour paper just because I'm using watercolour paints today it doesn't have to be watercolour paper it can be any type of paper um, it can be you know just regular A4 paper if you're going to do it um, using crayons or pencils or um, paints or uh, pens, whatever uh, you want to use. Um, or you can use a canvas if you want to. I have done it onto canvas before. It does work that way around as well. But anyway, this one is watercolour paper. And then I've got my watercolour paints, some water, and I've got a brush. So there's me watercolour paints down here. Just bought some from the range I bought a starter set doesn't have anything posh um, and then I've got a mixer palette here as well just out of shot mixer palette and the mixer palette is also the reason why there is a lovely water splodge on this photograph because I washed the tray and put it over the picture and dripped on it so that's what that is so we're not going to be incorporating that rather nice water splodge Maybe that's one for another day. Maybe you could do a whole art project with water splodges. Ah, one for another day. Anyway, today's. So, I'm going to put this bit of watercolour paper out of the way, just to keep it safe. And this is my photograph. I'm going to turn it over. And this is the bit that takes the time. So, cue uh, time lapse. Basically, just... Basically just colouring in the back with a pencil. It 
And this is why a soft pencil works better because you get a heavier, thicker layer of graphite on the paper. Shape in the picture to to the uh, watercolour paper and to the, t the, the board behind um, just because I just don't want it moving around um, what I'm going to say as well I am not going to do because I'm doing this as a watercolour one of the things about watercolour is there's a certain vagueness to watercolour painting you don't have you don't always have like loads of sharp lines it's um it's kind of it's a bit more acceptable to have um a certain amount of blurriness to it so i'm not going to do all of the details so like the fence posts things like that where it's kind of sharp detail i'm not going to include that i'm also going to approximate the colors so i'm going to i'm going to now sort of outline using my pencil which i have freshly sharpened i'm going to outline areas of color so these are areas that are going to be um one color or another and I'm not going to do shading as much when I'm painting. Might be able to do a certain amount of shading, but I really don't want to. I just want to kind of keep um, like block areas of colour, just to kind of keep that sort of nice sort of vagueness to it. So, once again, here we go. I'm just going to uh, outline. Of course, there's that bit there where I um, had my accident with the water. The other thing as well is don't forget that you can keep referring back to this photograph for your colours. Or, like I said before, if you do it as a black and white image, you can see your areas where the colours are. And if you have issues with this, if you've got access to a, a printer and um, some sort of uh, graphics program. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. There's actually quite a lot of online Photoshop style editors or even just apps you can use. Uh, it's not too bad. I see I missed one line, which is that one up there. Aside from that, it's not half bad actually. But I've missed a bit of the fence enough. So I'll just put that in there. Let's face it. Benson's probably not going to get included one way or another. On the bottom of the building. 
Again, that's uh, easily fixed. So, I think I've got everything in. I think that's pretty much everything we need for the outline anyway. So, the next step is to paint it. So, keeping the, the original picture nearby because you are going to need it for reference. I'm going to use watercolours. One of the reasons for that is um, I quite like working with watercolour because it's quite vague. Um, and you can have quite a lot of, you can move a lot of uh, colour around. You can kind of put a colour down and you can make it something else. Mind, some of these colours are a bit dodgy, I think. I could have sworn I had another blue. Let's see what that one's like. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like any other colour though, any other paint though. You can um, mix it down with a with something else. And when I was saying before about not painting what's not there, don't forget that the sky has hints of blue in it, but actually quite a lot of it is grey. So don't try and over blue the sky. When it's actually mostly grey. I've put quite a lot of blue down there. I really didn't need that much blue. Um, it needs a bit more white, I think. And what I'll do to save on paint here is I will start with my blue areas that I have. And then I will be adding black to it to grey it down. And doing sections and just kind of mixing out from these areas. So what have I got? Let's put a bit more water in because I want it to kind of go quite a long way. So that one there, that area there. That's a bit too too bad. Be completely different. <laughs> Don't forget with watercolor as well, though. You can you can add more water, make it flow a bit more. Um. Right, well, for some reason, <laughs> right, well, for some reason, um, the video that I did of the second half of that video went out of focus, so I couldn't show you much more of the end of the creation. However, this is the finished picture. What I will say, though, is that the final section where I did the walls and the cobblestones, I got that mottled effect by using salt, just like regular table salt. Um, I put quite a bit of pa paint down, quite a bit of water down on the paint, I should say, and um, sprinkled the salt onto it and let it dry. Um, rock salt's probably better because you get the bigger crystals. And um, as it dried, um, the colour kind of clung around the outside of the crystal. So uh, that's how you get that model effect. And you just brush the salt away off the picture at the end, but it looks quite cool. One of the things was I did kind of skip over the actual watercolour bit in the tutorial. That's because I'm not really doing watercolour technique today. This is just about how to cheat at actually doing, uh, transferring the image over and creating an image from a photograph. So that's all for today. See you next time.